got a special treat for you. At least I think I have a special treat for you. I'm gonna do a little bit of something different. I'm actually gonna have a little bit of kind of like a behind the scenes liquidation palette edition video. So once the palettes are actually done, they're broken down, and we've already separated like what's gonna go on eBay, what's gonna be sold online, then we have a stack of stuff that won't be sold online. It'll be sold locally. So now is the time we had to go through and figure out how much are we going to sell it for locally? So now is when you go through and you kind of like figure out where it's going to go, which location will be sold at. Because lots of times people sell locally at many different places, many like online selling apps. You could sell it at flea market, you could sell at garage sales, whatever you wanted to. So let's do a little bit of behind the scenes liquidation palette version. And let's do some pricing on items that will be sold locally from the two most recent pallets you saw me purchase from Barton's Discounts, the two Superstore liquidation pallets that were $950 is what they cost me. So let's go in the garage. Let's see what the wife's doing. Let's see uh, behind the scenes. Let's go. So we are in our garage right now and our garage has pretty much been overtaken. It's pretty much storage now for our business. But the wife right now, she's actually going through and trying to label some stuff that we're gonna sell locally. We had to go through. Some of this stuff right here is not suitable for online sales. We're gonna figure out prices for some of this stuff here. The stack here, same way stuff over here. Like you've seen these pops in the most recent video. We gotta figure out some prices here. Some of this stuff I've already have has been priced. So this is kind of like the after event. You have to go back through touch everything all over again and start looking at damage start looking at you know stuff that's a little bit deformed and start pricing stuff accordingly this is like the tryout phase this is when you have to actually figure out if stuff's broken if it's nasty and price accordingly a couple of, i'll sh just show you a couple of things as to why we made the decision to sell it the way that we've sold it so for example this particular clock number one it's very large item to ship so finding a box that fits this and by the time you wrap it and do all the stuff that needs to be done with it, it's, uh, it's going to be expensive to ship. The other thing is, is when I'm looking at it, it has a big old ding right here. Yep, it's got some damage on there. So we have to, you know, take that into consideration. So between the, the size of the item, the weight that it'll be, this is probably four pounds just as it is. You add box, bubble wrap, all that you're up to probably six pounds. Um, it doesn't make sense. So that's why we're selling this one locally. During this phase, as you go through, you start looking at stuff, that's when you start actually seeing a little bit of damage on these goods. Or you start seeing stuff that might not even be sellable. So like this Lidman mop right here, um, you know, it sells for, brand new, it sells for $34.95. But as you look inside of it, you'll see, yes, everything is here, but you can tell that it has been used. So mm. this is this is going to be deeply discounted because of that, and it'll be sold locally. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we're probably looking at, you know, this is a $30 item, but sold locally and used, you're probably looking at about five bucks or yeah. so. It'll be a quick sale yeah. kind of item. Yeah. But then I got like, your it's like these Funko Pops here, even though like they're, they were, um, clearance off for only $15 these sell on eBay for about $25 I'm actually going to price these for $30 and I'm going to try to get 30 but like I'll sell these locally at some of my spots and the first person who offers me 25 for them I'll take 25 bucks but like I'm in no super fast hurry to sell like these pops because the Haunted Mansion series is extremely popular it's a Disney kind of a series. And uh, these I can sit on for a few months, not a big deal. And so like these, uh, I'll try to get top dollar for them and they will sell over time. They will sell. But like during this time now is when I had to go through, you know, this is the post liquidation part, the pallet part. We gotta start peeling off all these labels, clearance tags as easily or as uh, gently as possible. Kind of hard to do it while I hold a camera but you kind of get the gist of everything. So you gotta start peeling off labels. Obviously you can't let the customer see, you know, it was 15 on clearance, but you know, we actually paid probably like a buck for them. So this is the, uh, the behind the scenes part of taking all these tags off of every single 
item here if there are tags this is kind of like the just the tedious part of pallet flipping now This is when you go through and you notice that things are a little loose. So this probably actually came in pieces originally and never returned this. Like it's still brand new. It still has a little, little bit of, you know, box love to it. Some liquidation love, but you know, just a little bit, a little turn the screwdriver or two here. This is when you start pulling stuff out of boxes. You check for pieces, make sure everything's there. Like I said, this is the tedious part of pallet flipping seeing you know if stuff's actually complete this is the thing i love right here instruction manual. instructions so that way i can go in here and i can say what pieces and parts are supposed to be here and look at that we have a parts list that's very helpful i'll mark on the box what's missing and that way i know i can keep track of what's missing and the customer will know what they're getting <laughs> that's the tedious part of pallet flipping and, and things missing either you find a replacement for it or you mark it way down just to blow it out quickly because somebody else might be able to actually find a replacement for it or they actually might need it for parts for themselves so there's always ways to move stuff even if, if that's missing something major you can still sell it it might not be for very much you can still move it though this takes up some time whenever you're trying to go through your pallets clean off sometimes mystery substances sometimes it could be just like rust from uh, like the storage when it's being stored in the warehouses it could just be like rust from the metal shelving sometimes or like this could be this is know. obviously something that's spilt down it as you can see from the pattern that's on there like a liquid of something it's coming off though so you clean off that mystery substance you can get you know a few more bucks out of it so it's always worth it to try to get off at least some of it so this is i'd rather see a damaged package like like yeah. what i'm doing to it right here oh yeah then just oh <laughs> then to see some kind of mystery uh substance mystery on there. brown yeah but yeah this is the behind the scenes of pallet flipping is cleaning repairing fixing making everything look a little bit better and if you have a box that's like really really bad like if this was terribly bad i would just crack the box open and i would individually price the items in here since this is something that has individual wet wipe products in it you can just crack it open and individually price it each one instead of selling it by the case yeah. sell it individually eight packs in each one so you can just sell eight packs individually but yeah this box isn't too bad now got that mystery brown stuff off but yep that's all part of the uh, process of pallet flipping cleaning so what are you trying to do there dear does it not have the little needle uh -uh. well the basketball needs the little needle too i think it's missing the needle dang it dang it we don't have the little needle thing well, what price are we putting on the sheet sets here? So these sheet sets will probably sell locally because we actually have a lot of good success selling sheet sets here. So what about 15 bucks or so? Well, this a, is a king a sheet? size. Oh, kings sell yeah. really, really well. I'm going to say like 20. Yeah, that's what I'm 20 saying 20 on a king too. set. I'm sure probably it sells new at retail stores, probably more than that. But, uh... I mean, I'll look it up and make sure because I don't want to... Oh, I don't want to price ourselves out. Yeah, you don't, don't want to price it too low. But uh, if we sell it locally, you know, we don't have to pay the eBay fee. So right there, we save 10% right there. So we always got to take that into account. So you got to drop the price a little bit, pass the savings on to the customer. So that's all the, like the difference you sell locally, you always give a better, at least our business model, we give a better deal to the customers locally because we save on eBay fees that way. Okay, so $24 brand new in the store. So for this, I would probably say, I mean, for us, I would probably say about 12 bucks on this. 12. Locally. About half, half price though. Yeah, so yeah. because we do this, have is price. A, this is a lower quality sheet set. Um, if it was like a, you know, thousand count sheet set, thread count sheet set, you know, the higher the thread count of sheet set, the more expensive. Mm -hmm. Because the higher the thread count is, the more luxurious feeling, the softer, um, 
the higher quality, it's gonna last you longer. So that's what that's where you get into big money on the sheets is the higher thread the count. Quality. If you didn't know that. Yeah. So we sold it like on eBay, you you probably asked fifteen to eighteen for it. You probably could. But yeah, but locally, twelve bucks sounds good. That's half of what it would cost new. Pass the savings on to the buyer. We actually end up selling it for the same amount minus the eBay fee. So it all works out and we got local customers who are happy. So, and then we've got another one right here that's a queen. So I'm gonna drop that down to about $10. Yeah. Because we got a smaller size. 10 bucks, that's a good, good solid price. So we have a random shoe. One random shoe. And I still have a video to shoot of this liquidation. We have one box. So we're gonna hang on to the shoe. One shoe. Because it's new. One shoe new. And it might be in the box that I am going to record in the near future. Yep. Our but if favorite. it is not, then it will be donated to uh, the blue trash can. We've got our favorite thing right here. My new swimming pool. It's a three pool. <laughs> that would pool. so fit me right there. Because if you take two children out, I would fit. I would so fit in there. The water would probably spill over. Yes. Well, you can only put... <laughs> you can only put like a nugget no, of water you, in. You can put water up to like right here. <laughs> and, then, and then I get in and it <laughs> and would it go right, right here. That is definite. That's awesome. It might be a keeper. Yeah, well, no, it's not only, a keeper. It's only five foot six inches in di diameter. So you couldn't even lay flat in it. Well, I do fetal position. You would have to. I do fetal. Because it's only five foot six inches and you're almost six foot tall. Fetal position. I used to be over six foot, but I shrunk. Well, that's what happens when you get old. Yes. You shrink. Yeah. Because you're old now. So give me a thumbs up down below if I should keep the swimming pool and take some Instagram photos in a fetal position in the pool. Would it be a good idea? Oh my God, no. Yes. Oh God, no. Yes. <laughs> no. I'm like an Instagram model. <laughs> Everybody's an Instagram model. <laughs> All Instagram you have to do model. is take a picture and put yourself on Instagram, and I'm an Instagram model. I, I, but I am. Once I do the the uh, pool pictures. What What's your career? I'm an Instagram, I'm an Instagram model. Instagram model. Well, I'm fetal position in the baby pool. I mean, I could put. <laughs> we could take a snapshot of this right here and put it on Instagram and be Instagram models. <laughs> that was my Vogue. Striking a pose. Yep. Oh boy. This is the. The uh, what's the I'm thinking of? Happy days. Behind I the scenes know. of pallet flipping, this is what you do. Exactly what we're doing right now. This is what you do. You joke around, try to have fun because this is the tedious part. So have fun, if possible. If possible. If possible. So this is the part that goes pretty quickly. Usually, you get a box of all kinds of random stuff in here. And so basically what we're going to do is we're going to go through, Clint's going to grab what's in the box, he's going to tell me the price, I'm going to price it, throw it in this box. So that way we can keep things moving. Um, we do separate things from dollar box items, so at our local location we sell things in a dollar box. And um, so anything that's going to be a dollar we put in one specific box because we, it's kind of like a dump bin where people love to dig through. Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest, sometimes you can find treasures in there. Um, yeah, sometimes we price stuff cheap on purpose there, just so you can like dig and find like something that sells for like 30 bucks, you get it for a dollar. Yeah. Like that's kind of like what we're known for is you can find some treasures in the dollar box. I mean, some treasures. You know, and sometimes it's things that we miss. Sometimes it's things that just need an item replaced out of it. So and sometimes it's on purpose. Yep. So <laughs> anyway, um, that's what we're going to do with this box is run through everything and get things going. Charger, five bucks. Troll ears, two dollars, but put it over like where it says $1.49. Do you want two dollars on this? One dollar. Brand new, mint color, about five bucks. No, like a dollar. A dollar for brand new flip flops? That's a deal. These are the cheapest flip flops in the world. We're cutting people deals right here. Deals and steals. These are kind of nice. Two count photo frames. They sell new for three dollars. We'll do it for two. One dollar. One buck. Oh, it's a 
content? Nope, that's staying here with me. <laughs> Keep. One dollar. One dollar. Some random seven pack dino four tees. Oh, that's There's underwear. Boys underwear. Dollar. It might be used. And who knows? Oh, he's got some really junky stickers. That's pretty much worthless. I'd like a buck on that. Laces, a buck. Can opener, a buck. Toothbrush holder. It's missing one of the legs on it, though. Oh, well, one we'll dollar. Do a dollar. One buck. Glass measuring jar, not cracked. Uh, used, though. And then, also, this is not going to be a dollar. A cool touch mattress pad. That'll probably be more about 10 maybe 15 stickers and that is pretty much how you sit down two of us will sit down kind of tag team a box and go through it one person pulls out names a price one person might say i'm keeping that which is usually me and then we uh build a new box and just keep going through stuff slowly so this is this is kind of the slow tedious part of behind the scenes of pallet flipping is uh this which everybody has wanted to see for a long time, and this is it. This is it right here. This is, uh, it's a lot of work. This is the tedious, the slow part. I mean, like, usually out here, we, we'd be playing music and stuff. She might start dancing, but uh, right now, obviously, we're not gonna have a dance party at this time. Really? Unless she wants to. <laughs> so hopefully you enjoyed this behind the scenes footage of power flipping. Real life, this is what happens whenever the camera turns off. This is what happens whenever the pallet is broken down and the real work starts. And uh, so this is the, well, this is the preparation for or, yeah, our the local prep. sale. For the local, yeah, she is correct. So that is that piece. Now, the part that we've already done is all of the eBay. The listings that go on eBay have already been taken in. They've been processed. I've actually gone through and listed about 80% of it. Um, I still have clothing to go through, but the rest of it has already been um, uploaded and listed. I've looked through things. I've tested things. A lot of the stuff was factory sealed or brand new. So that was kind of nice. And um, so, yeah, this is the prep to get into our local uh, sale. Hope you enjoyed this. You want to see some more behind the scenes footage? We'll do some more in the future. Just kind of show you the real life of a pallet flipper. See you next time.